So I'd like to reconvene um, school committee from uh, executive session. So we're not now back in open session. Uh, our first order of business is to approve the minutes of May the 8th. So um, could I have a motion to approve the minutes of May the 8th? Move to approve the minutes of May the 8th. Okay. Second. Any discussion about that? All in, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay. Oh, I should mention that our fifth uh, school committee member, Mr. Quigley, is uh, away on business. So he's not here tonight. And he's not. And Mrs. Mosa is joining us via computer. <laughs> or Wi-Fi or whatever. Okay, uh, next order of business is public comment. So are there any comments from the public? No? <laughs> okay, thank you. Right, so Dr. Klingeman, would you like to give your report to the committee? Sure, I just have a very brief report tonight. Um, right. <clears throat> I just wanted to say that we're finishing up our um, district committees that we've had throughout the year, the district curriculum committee, the social emotional learning committee, the school wellness advisory mm -hmm. council, um, several other committees, but we'll be putting an end of the year report in the June school committee folder because we right. just ran out of time to have all of the different groups come to report back to you. So I just wanted you to look out for that in the next meeting folder. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Mrs. Blake. Um, so I just have two quick updates for tonight. So um, the first update is that we are in the final planning stages of um, bus registration for the upcoming school year. Um, and we're hoping, hoping to open up registration to families next week. Um, and then we've also begun our initial uh, planning for the fiscal year 21 operating in um, capital budgets. Um, so <clears throat> that will include um, our district budget calendar, our operating budget requests, and um, a comprehensive and multi-year capital plan. Okay, great. Thank you. Right. Jess, do you want to go? Yep. So seniors have their last full day of school all together on Monday, so they're doing exams this week. Um, and then they have their last, one of their last final events before graduation on Friday where they do like a senior cookout um, and then they rehearse for graduation. So that's very exciting for them. Um, and then the, pro, or the club Ducks Buds, which used to be Best Buddies, has their, it's kind of like a prom, but it's a spring dance coming up on Friday, which is always one of my favorite events of the year. And I know all the kids love it, so. That's exciting. And um, on May 23rd, the 7th and 8th graders have their chorus concert um, at 7 p.m. in the pack. And then I think the following week, the 6th graders also have their concert. Um, and then DMS is having their Spring Fest, which I'm pretty sure is pretty new, um, run by their student council. And it's on May 31st. And basically, I think it's they just play games and have fun together. And I know DHS student council is also helping out with that, um, facilitating the event. And then lastly, on June 5th and 6th, the second graders have their um, trip over to Alden to get their help with transitioning, which is cool. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a long time ago, yeah. but it definitely helped. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I had just a couple of um, things to report. Um, first off, I was reading the latest newsletter from the North and South River Watershed Association, and I came upon a little article on the power of place-based learning. And uh, so I was reading about Duxbury Middle School, uh, where their eighth grade is um, studying reproduction and adaptation, and they've been working with um, the North and South River Watershed Association's environmental educator and they had a field trip um, to visit Herring Run Park in Pembroke. So um, congratulations, that's a great, um, great example of uh, using our local environment to extend learning and um, get kids familiar with, um, with all that's ar around us, so thanks for that. Um, the other thing I wanted to report on, um, Dr. Antonucci and I uh, met with the town manager Rene Reed and the finance director, John Adams, uh, to discuss 
the um, forecast for, or the change in the forecast for uh, tuition, out of district tuition related to vocational technical schools. Uh, so in previous years, our uh, students leaving Duxbury to go to vocational technical schools have been on the order of seven or eight students, and so that was the basis of our forecast for fiscal year. 2020, and it turns out that we're likely to have about 19 students um, enrolling in vocational technical education in September. So that uh, will cause an adjustment to our budget forecast for the school's operating budget. So we, uh, thanks to Mrs. Blake, we um, went through the numbers with the town manager and the finance director, uh, and the total variance is uh, 222 thousand eight hundred and eighty eight dollars if all of those 19 students enroll um, in these schools in September so uh, we had an initial discussion that was very productive about how we would go about funding this uh, and it's clear that uh, including vocational technical education <laughs> expenses within a school district's budget is not common practice in Massachusetts. Um, both Mr. Reed and Mr. Adams said that they'd never come across it in their previous careers um, uh, prior to Duxbury. So there was also some discussion about uh, migrating that expense line across to the education expenses of the town rather than keeping it within the school operating budget. So we'll um, keep you updated on that, but it's an ongoing discussion. And can I just make a comment on that? I yeah. just want to be perfectly clear that as a school committee, we've all been completely supportive yes. of voc ed. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I myself have been a big proponent, not every single student wants to prepare to go to college. So I think it's great that because we don't have it, we have some great schools around us. Um, and we're paying for the tuition as well as the transportation. Um, right. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to say, we're all 100% in, in support of voc ed. Yes. So it's just sort of a how to pay for it issue. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, just to follow up on that, that's really, that, that's what I was going to talk about too. It was a very productive meeting, and it's, um, it's really, um, we had a really productive conversation. So, I mean, I just kind of want to publicly thank Rennie and John. They're very, very supportive. And um, again, just sort of having a common understanding that this is a highly unusual practice is just kind the of the accounting practice, yeah. We, you know, and I, I think to, to Kelly's point, you know, we've got a couple, I've got a Got kind of an angry email from a parent, and then there was a, I think a pretty misinformed letter to the edit today about about the issue. And I just would caution people not to take this out of context. We we've been talking about this at this table since probably my first month when I came to Duxbury. I think I brought it up in October 2017. This is an accounting issue, period. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's not an indictment on vocational education. It's not a judgment on it. It's literally an accounting issue, um, and so. I just really do caution people to not take it out of context and I would reiterate Ms. President and I, I'm thrilled that these kids are having the opportunity exactly. to go to the South Shore and uh, some, some go to Norfolk Gag as well. They're incredible programs um, and right now those schools are doing things for certain kids that we can't do, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's an incredible benefit. But from an accounting standpoint, the Duxbury Public Schools can't be bearing the brunt of, of, of that of that impact, and which is what we're trying to reconcile. And um, and again, the town was very supportive and, and understanding of that. And I'm very confident that it'll it'll get better in the future. So, um, yeah, I appreciate that. I, I would just always ask people if they have a question about it, um, you know, to not rely on a snapshot article in a paper to make judgments about something that's been a two-year conversation. So please, I, we welcome any phone calls. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, now you have a, an item you want to... Yeah, so we have a, a very special guest in the audience tonight, and I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Donovan, but tonight we're going to spend a few minutes recognizing uh, Gordy Layton um, for his, this is not a typo, 56 years of service <laughs> in Duxbury Public Schools. Uh, and Gordy, thanks for coming, and Gordy has his family with him, and we thank you for coming. Mr. Donovan? Thank you very much. So uh, I would again, uh, I would thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. Uh, Gordy uh, Layton is retiring in some way from almost the, for the second time from the Duxbury Public School. So he was hired as a teacher in 1963 and had and taught a full career 
uh, in the Duxbury Public Schools, and sometime around, well, 51 years ago, he became our student accounts manager. And he has faithfully done that for 51 years, uh, along with the help of his family and his wife, Gloria, who is here as well. And uh, there is not a single club at the high school that has done anything over the last 50 years without Gordy's help. Um, and so the, the role that he fills in the school is, is one that we spent with, with uh, Katie and with Sarah uh, weeks trying to figure out and months trying to figure out how we we're going to solve when Gordy left. <laughs> and so um, we are just so grateful for his time and for his dedication to the students of Duxbury. Uh, almost two careers worth. He proudly told me uh, a week and a half ago that in the town, excuse me, in the uh, town report, he is the longest serving em employee. Wow. Um, and he means a ton and has meant a ton to our school over the last 56 years. And so I wanted to thank him. And we all wanted to thank him for his time and his dedication to the kids. In addition to those two hats, he's worked probably almost every football game probably for the same amount of time. <laughs> Uh, he also runs the scores table for basketball games, um, and he's just a, a wonderful guy. So we have a, a small token of appreciation uh, tonight, and then we are actually going to put a install a plaque nice. on the scores table uh, oh. at, at half court where he's been working uh, faithfully for decades uh, in honor of his service uh, to the kids and to our community. Great. And so we just wanted to yeah. thank Great. Mr. Light. No. Thank you. No, thank you very much. Okay. But I think we've got something a little backwards here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I firmly believe that it's I who should be thanking the town of Duxbury, okay? And here are my reasons, okay? And that is, I firmly believe that, okay, you gave me the, well, okay, the chance to meet and work with so many fine people, okay? and talented people, such as, okay, the parents of all the students I taught, okay, the business people from both the town hall and Chandler. Then we got at the school, the secretaries, the custodians, administrators, and then of course, all of my colleagues, okay, from the teaching. I also, I wanna thank them for giving me, or not, excuse me, giving me, for having the trust and the faith in me to be able to teach, okay, so many students. I taught approximately 4,000 students in wow. my, my time. Students who I've seen, okay, grow, become mature young adults, and who've gone on to many vocations, doctors, nurses, teachers, Firemen, policemen, lawyers. Okay, you gotta get we gotta get them in. <laughs> okay, and, and one in particular was works for the, uh, the CIA. Okay, and uh, there's so many others. Okay, thanks. Okay, to uh, the, the, the town for allowing me to really teach every grade level. Okay, in the school, from the cal from the basic math to the calculus. Okay, and that uh, I'm thankful also, okay, uh, for the town to allow me to work for more years, the number of years after I st stopped teaching. Okay, Jack Hill, okay, I remember when I retired in 94, okay, he came to me, he said, Gordy, this was in September, this school, I already started Okay, and he says, I want you to finish out the year if you, okay, we haven't got anybody to do it. Well, that one year <laughs> led to 24 more years. Okay, making a total, as Jim just mentioned, 51 years for their student activities job, which I gotta be honest, I truthfully love, still do, okay, and I'm gonna miss it, okay. Um, before, okay, I, I give my final, Okay, comment. I'd like to introduce <laughs> my family here over there. Okay. <laughs> One, this is Nancy, she's my youngest. Okay. She's my little mother hen. Okay. <laughs> she's, she she takes she looks after both my wife and I all the time. 
okay, and makes very many wise decisions for us. We heed to her advice. It's time for him to retire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and sitting beside her is my sister Teresa, okay, and uh, she has a lot to do with the town of Duxbury and the students. She's, this is her 45th year driving the bus. Oh, wow. 32 years, okay, of that is in Duxbury, okay? This is, so this is the 32nd year for Duxbury. Okay, and the one in front, okay, that's my rock, as far as that's concerned. She had a little mishap by uh, Mother's Day. She fell and tripped, and she fractured her uh, top of her shoulder and her arm in four different places. Golly. So, and uh, that's her. And, she has been a tremendous help to me, okay, and in more ways than not, okay, and uh, I don't know what I would do without her. She, as far as that is concerned, uh, she has uh, also helped me in my bookkeeping job, okay, when I was incapacitated back in December and January, she did the books. So I do her. So I want to thank her, okay. Thank her for being herself, okay, <laughs> and also for being my very best friend. Great, nice. okay, nice. and I do love her. <laughs> <laughs> my my final statement, Siri, is this: Duxbury, thank you, okay, from the two of us here for fifty-six wonderful years. Great, okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Can we take a picture? We will go back. We'll go back so your family can be there. Oh, that's Duxbury swag. It wasn't showing. It's just like a... All right, should I go back to see how it's on? I just closed it. I can't believe it keeps turning just off when I give it back to you. No, it, there was no, nothing there. This is an it, but we'd want like a Duxbury. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I'm not making this up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pens. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Okay. So, okay. I always like to have a little like, tokens to give. Mm -hmm. People do so much for us. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's this. I think it's this. Thank you very much for that. Okay, are we, we yep, move yep. on? Okay, so uh, we have a couple of discussion items coming up. The first is a school improvement plan reports from the building principals. So I'll leave it up to you to decide 
what order you want to go in? Okay. <laughs> okay. And. Are you going to project on? Yes, I will. Oh, okay. But do they can see you over there? No, but they're going to project. It hasn't been. Awesome. I'll get this one. Oops. Oops. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So we are going to, um, we're up here together tonight. We're all going to sort of highlight. Um, one item from our school improvement plan that we really wanted to focus on. Um, and you're welcome to ask questions about any of the other ones, but we're gonna focus on um, one goal each right. to sort of talk about. Our slides have a lot of words on them, <clears throat> but I'm gonna really just talk about our first goal from our school improvement plan this year, which focused on social emotional learning at Chandler. Um, so the goal was to promote the importance of social emotional learning for all children and we were looking to increase resources and awareness for all staff members and students. So one of the things that we did was focused on our SEL webpage that was really created for staff. Um, and I do have to give Sue McNeil, our assistant principal, the, um, the kudos on that one because she worked on that with our Chandler Green team, which was our Chandler-based SEL team of teachers. And they basically worked to um, update resources, books, lesson plans. They used meeting time to really create lesson plans that they uploaded to the site. And then um, Sue put together a weekly uh, little snapshot of the website that went out as part of my weekly email to staff. So each week, the staff would get a highlight of something that was on the website. Having trouble with, you know, peer relationships in your class, here's an article and a lesson that might focus on that. So it really um, just pointed out for teachers ways that they could use the resources that we'd gathered and, you know, have them sort of forced exploring on the, on the resources that right. we had put together. Um, in addition to that, we had done some school-wide uh, different celebrations this year. We did start with Hello Week at the beginning of the year um, and the Great Kindness Challenge, which I think all four of our schools did. We, at Chandler, we um, focused on grade level kindness challenges, so each student got a kindness bingo board and they were doing these kindness challenges throughout their day both at home and at school, so they could choose you know, a random act of kindness and sort of color it in and then reflect on all the kind things they had done that week at the end of the week. I also went into the cafeteria during grade level lunches and read a kindness book to each grade level and did like a little mini lesson around that, which was really fun. And um, the kids loved seeing the book projected up on the screen and having it read aloud and having discussion as a whole grade level in the cafeteria, so that was really fun. Um, and as I said, we also sent home a family edition of the Great Kindness Challenge for families to participate at home if they wanted to. Um, so that's really, those were the main focus areas of our SEL goal this year. We really did a lot to, you know, it was like a daily, weekly, monthly focus for our staff. Um, I had a lot of teachers at the end of the year really saying, you know, this year I wasn't necessarily doing SEL. I was focusing on social emotional learning during every day. So instead of just, you know, doing a social skills lesson or doing a, you know, lesson on kindness, teachers were saying, while we practice you know, our sight words today, we're gonna really focus on turn taking. We're gonna practice the skills of how to decide who goes first and really just putting those things into the everyday practice in the classroom, which is what we want. Yeah, right. Okay. That's any cool. questions about anything else on there? Do you guys, have you got questions? No, you answer. I was gonna ask you how it looks different. But you yeah, just, it does, yeah. it really does. It was, I think it's, it's been a really great step this year. And have you noticed an impact on um, children's behavior? I mean, are there any ways to kind of measure or quantify the impact that it's had? On you know, so we didn't really do a sort of quantifiable measure mm -hmm. this no, year. No, but it's but more kind of 
But really, right. we have noticed kids have more language around, right. you know, problem solving and, sure. you know, what to do if there is a conflict and, you know, how to respond in certain situations because we've really been focusing on that, like role right. playing at our age level and things like that. And we have sure. noticed a difference in, you know, an increased awareness in language great. for kids. It's okay. been great. That's good. That's good. I did have another question about um, the second goal. Yes. Um, you had a, an online survey and um, and identified trends in data. Is that the survey uh, that you were discussing when you came to us last month about changing the report card? And was so yes. most of the responses were around uh, school home communication. Actually. Right? No, the, oh. it was it is the same survey, okay. um, but the survey focused on all sorts of things. Oh, right. That okay. the portion I talked about last time was just those were the few questions around right. report cards, but it also focused on, you know, communication with the teacher. It focused right. on how their child feels about school, um, school security and safety, like pretty much anything that mm -hmm. we want to gather information about. Sure. So it was about um, twenty five questions. Right. Okay. Focusing on all those things, and then we as a school council looked at all of the responses of the hundred and six that we received Great. and went through and identified trends. Okay. And were there any kind of action points that so we to didn't emerge? we didn't identify any actions yet. Um, okay. We left that for the fall, but we did identify that the trends that we saw were around um, the need for greater communication. Okay. Around so it, some of the things were misunderstandings, sure. which leads to we need yeah. better communication right. around okay. them. You know, so it was okay. it was things like that that we really identified. Okay, we need to communicate better more often. Sure. Um, you know, in different ways for specific topics. Great. Okay, great. Thank you very sure. much. Hi. Hi. So tonight I am going to also talk about social emotional learning because. Can you put the slides? That's okay. <laughs> Not that I can read it anyways, but <laughs> no, I can. Um, so I had two action points under social emotional learning, and the first was um, that the environment of the school will be safe, welcoming, and conducive to learning. And that was to be shown by a decrease in the referrals to the adjustment counselor and behavior incidents with the assistant principal. I am a numbers person. I am all about data. So it was important to me, and the reason I'm highlighting this is because last year we had 209 incidents. And this year, as of last Friday, we had 103. So that's a 50% reduction. And for me, it's because of, as you go into the next um, you know, goal, the educator, uh, educator, students, and families, community members work together. I really feel it's because of what we did for social emotional learning, meaning that the teachers are practicing it. Every week I do a Monday morning game plan and I highlighted a book called 20 Ways to Implement SEL in Your Classroom. And that is, there are 20 steps and I just finished um, I will finish number 20 next week. Some of them I divided out because they were that important, and it brought me to write a DEF grant so that teachers can own one of those books because I just would highlight and they wanted to know more. Well, can you tell us how to do that? Well, I can, but I'd be rewriting the whole book. So <laughs> um, how about if I, and so I am lucky enough I uh, was able to, I will be able to purchase one of those books for everybody because it's a step-by-step -step what to do in your classroom, how to identify what the important jobs are for kids and why they um, are necessary for building, you know, cooperation and responsibility and cooperative play, that type of thing. Sorry. Um, she wants to know the answer. Um, we also provided SEL training um, and then also with our um, adjustment counselor um, on ways to help anxious students and I think that was a huge um, reason that we didn't have so many going down to our adjustment counselor. She'd be like, um, where are they? And I said, well, I think we're doing a great job. Every staff meeting, teachers shared. We, it was one of the first things we did was to share about SEL practices in the classroom because we're such a large school, we don't know who's doing what and what works. Um, so that was awesome. Also, the uh, Mr. E and Shannon Jones, who is our adjustment counselor, has developed a teacher resource website that will also um, focus on parents. 
um, and things that they can do at home that has been worked on all year and we're going to roll it out in the fall. And the other thing I did purchase this year out of money that I had was social emotional learning in the classroom and provided that book to all of our team teachers, which is a resource. Um, what I want to purchase is the um, practical guide on what the activities are and how to incorporate, not just say the words, but how to teach the students um, to what Erin was talking about also in practice in the classrooms, because it's not separate. It's what we do every day. Right. Great. So, Thank that's you. exciting. Thank any you. other questions about any other goals? You guys have anything? No. Mm -mm. I could talk all night because they're awesome. But go ahead. <laughs> well, um, no, I mean, the reading. The reading. I mean, you've got yeah. the new reading program. And it's awesome. And that was another, um, the growth was 43%. And I'm just pulling, and we're doing the process of evaluations now, and I'm looking at some of these, and they're, you know, a lot of them had identified that they wanted a 15% growth, and they're looking at 47, 49% Great. growth on an average Great. for their classes. Like, it's, it's incredible. Great. I was just wondering, um, the goal two, you had a survey. I was wondering if there were any insights that kind of percolated out of the survey that were going to lead to... One thing that we did talk about, I was thrilled with 139 um, people that responded. One area that we talked about at the um, last school council was ways to involve parents. They're coming right. from Chandler, and they want to be involved more in the classrooms. And as they go through up into fifth grade, and that's the... When I... When I you know, segregate all the data out. It's the fifth grade parents. And so we are really talking as a staff, how can that look? Okay. You know, not just Xeroxing, is it, is it the maker space? Is right. it some projects that we can do to invite um, families in? Because teachers sure. are not, Reader's Workshop doesn't lend a lot of itself to, to, doing, to doing that as, a, as opposed to small selected groups that in the past that we had. So we have to, as a staff, find ways to do that. And that's one thing that we talked about at the last council meeting and I shared with the staff. Um, and it's interesting, I'm in the process of interviewing people and I'm asking them how they involve parents in their, in their classrooms. So, you know, see what so they do at this space. end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Mrs. McGuire. Hi there. Um, so I am also going to talk about our SEL goal um, for the middle school. So our goal was to embed social emotional learning strategies and best practices into students' academic and school-wide experience. Um, and I think, you know, when we initially discussed this goal um, as a staff, the staff were extremely receptive to it as a focus point for this school year. Um, and I'm really pleased to say that they have uh, taken that goal and really run with it in a variety of different ways. Um, so we spent a lot of time as a faculty not only kind of digging into what social emotional learning is, um, but understanding how the competencies and the strategies don't just um, exist within the school environment, but actually need to tie to the curriculum experience for kids. Um, and so that was kind of the difference um, in skill that we were trying to develop in our teachers. Um, and so faculty meeting time, professional development time um, was spent in a lot of collaborative efforts with um, our Panorama data, with the training that Panorama provided as well as Newzella in terms of resources. And then um, I really had a number of staff who uh, were so excited about this goal that they sought out additional resources and were bringing those back to other staff members. So. Um, that was really, really powerful. We were able to share some of that information through my Friday send-off to staff people. Um, and as they developed experiences with students, um, they were sharing that across the school and it was triggering other groups of teachers to uh, find those connections for their team and for their curriculum areas. So just to give you a couple of examples um, to give you a sense of what I'm talking about. At the sixth grade level, both teams identified a theme that was tied to the SEL of competencies for each of the terms. And both teams kicked off that uh, theme at the beginning of each term with all of their students and then tied that theme to their different curriculum areas throughout that whole term. So they had kind of team-based events um, and challenges. So for instance, we tied the kindness challenge to 
a kindness theme for that term, but for term three, uh, their focus area was perseverance. Uh, that's kind of the tough part of the school year, <laughs> um, which drags a little bit yeah. there. And so they really tied perseverance not only to the students' experience, but also um, in English classes they had uh, they added poems that highlighted the theme of perseverance right. and talked about how that related to their own actions and were e able to explicitly tie that um, to the curriculum, which was really powerful. Great. Um, another example in our science classrooms in the eighth grade, um, our science teachers tied the physiology of mindfulness practices um, to the actual experience of oh, wow. doing the mindfulness practices. Um, so they targeted uh, the few minutes when students returned from lunch during the longer block uh, as a great transition time to practice the mindfulness strategy, um, which uh, the teachers took some data on and the kids actually really appreciated the chance to kind of transition from the loud lunchroom back into their classroom setting. Um, and then they talked about the, you know, the, what is happening in your neurons and pathways mm -hmm. when you focus on your breathing and you center yourself um, back to access the curriculum. And so um, those are just a couple of examples of how uh, our, our folks at the middle school really uh, not only tried to embrace the competencies, but tie it to the curriculum, yeah. which was the, that next step piece. Um, we certainly uh, are on the path to that. Um, and next year, I foresee us continuing to, to really focus on that integration um, at higher and higher levels. But I think this year was a really strong start in making sure we're using the same language and sharing those strategies and investigating what works best for our grade levels and our content areas. Um, so I can't say enough about how proud I am of um, the teachers that really went out there and, and gave it a shot in a variety of different places. So. That's great, thank you. And I'm happy to answer any questions about any of the other goals too. Do you guys have any? I was just gonna ask you about your principal's advisory group. Yes. And how's that going? And They're a wonderful group. Um, I'm really excited to continue that. That was honestly, on some days, the highlight of my day was <laughs> with them. Yeah. Um, and so uh, they were instrumental in um, really having that student voice, that sharing what they felt their community needed. Um, and so the Spring Fest that we're having in a couple of weeks is really a product of that group communicating on behalf of their peers Great. with the student council and our other student leaders um, because they wanted more events where they could be together and have those community kind of not so structured mm. uh, but also structured enough that they they have a place and something to do um, all together. Uh, that group also looked at panorama data with me. Um, oh, okay. And so they were able to help me kind of break down what students perceived as high priority items for their own experience. And then I was able to take that data to the staff and we were able to kind of see how those connections were and were we perceiving things differently than the kids and vice versa. Um, and so they, uh, They've just been really a wonderful group and so open to being honest with feedback with me. Um, I was able to involve them in our hiring practices as well. So oh, um, for the assistant principal hiring that we've done, um, they were a part of the finalist uh, nice. interviews um, and they provided me with really great feedback on the candidates. And, it was, <laughs> um, you know, the, and they were so happy to be involved in it and so I'm really excited to continue next year. We've got our group of eighth graders that'll be transitioning on. We have a strong group of seventh graders that I foresee will stick with me next year. Um, we need to recruit some of those uh, incoming seventh graders and then get that new batch of uh, incoming sixth graders involved. But, Perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Donovan. Good evening again. So I uh, am going to focus actually on goal number four. Um, so we, the school department benefits enormously from a very uh, positive and productive relationship with the police department. And so last spring, as tragedies kind of arose all over the country, we, we reflected on our own plans and identified some areas that we really wanted to improve. And so uh, as an administrative team over the summer, all the principals and Dr. Klingman, Dr. Antonucci and the police department met and, and worked to revise all of our plans um, and how we would respond to all sorts of 
different types of emergencies. And so this fall, uh, across all the buildings, and the middle school and high school did it together, we had a, a half-day uh, PD training, which was very intense, and um, but and very well received by the student by the teachers. That led to subsequent trainings with students, uh, and then unfortunately, uh, we had the opportunity to practice. Uh, practice and then practice because we thought we had an emergency at one point. And so um, we have identified areas that we want to improve going forward, the next kind of the next layer of the plan. Um, but we, I, you know, not to speak for everyone here, but I, I feel like we're in a much better place with our planning and our operations and how we deal with emergencies uh, inside of the building. And our kids, um, I think, responded positively to being a part of it. It was no longer right. just kind of like a, a plan we drilled. We met on it, walked through it, having lived it at the middle school and the high school briefly, you know, for about 10 minutes. The kids had that first-hand experience and were able to kind of process through it. Um, but again, I can't say enough about how much the, how helpful our school resource officer, right. Officer Jamali is uh, in all of our buildings and, uh, and how, uh, just how much he added to that process for us. Great, great. I'd be happy to speak to about any of the other, any other goals as well. How are the students responding to um, the kind of heightened attention to school security? Are you getting? What a that's a great question. Um, I think our, our students are um, like us. You know, I think we we spend our day in schools, right. and um, unfortunately, um, there seem to be stories. You know, every couple of weeks from somewhere. And so we all kind of, I think, reflect on our experience. And I think our kids are, you know, I think the adults are no different than the kids. Right. Okay. Um, so, but I, I think as a community, the kids understand this is, part, unfortunately, it's part of the experience. Right. And uh, this is what we drill. And just like we drill for fire alarms um, and for fire drills, and um, we, we now drill for this. Right. But I, one of the things that came out of our plan was that our kids are more empowered to do things. Right. There, there are... Uh, if there was an actual emergency, they know they can leave. They know where the teachers know where to go, and that was something that our old plans didn't have. Okay. Um, and so I, that's a very reassuring thing. There's sure. different language now for different types of scenarios that the teachers understand and that the kids understand. Right. You know. And right. so um, I think the more we drill it, the more they get familiar with it. You know, we make we make an effort to have the same tone at Chandler for an right. emergency is the same tone at the high school. So as we as the you know the years kind of move on here and everyone becomes more accustomed to that and and we agree we'll, we'll be I think in a much better we'll be in a good place. Great. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and I think I mean having a high schooler you know and listening to the kids, they definitely feel more empowered. I think A they think this could be a reality, which for years you you hope that it well, everybody hopes that it never happens, but this isn't something we talked about the way we talk about it now, mm -hmm. because there have been so many incidences. Um, but I think the kids really, the, that last training was a different, it, it sort of flipped a switch that they had, um, they had more choices to take care of themselves and more options, and that it was okay to do that, and not just, you know, shelter in place, hide in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> And sadly, yeah. that's super important. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I had one other question for everybody. Yeah, for um, and I thought of it when you were talking about the decrease in um, referrals to adjustment counselors. Um, MCAS, does, M, do, does, you know, there are certain times a year where kids sort of get a little more, like right now they're all spring fevered. But does MCAS bring on anxiety at any level in the schools? Do you see an increase, or are they just so used to it that it's another debt? I can only speak for all of them, but I just, it's, it's just another day. We don't make a big deal about yeah. it. Um, we used to say on the announcements and put the signs out, please yeah. be quiet. We just, they come it's in and they sit down. <laughs> and they say now every once in a while, our benchmarks are harder than these. You know, and I, I, I'm still giving MCAS, and the kids are, you know, we're finishing up this week. Yeah. I think they're fine. Great. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that there's an uptick um, at all. Um, I think they're more in need of a walk around at the end of the testing <laughs> session, quite frankly, a little movement break, but I wouldn't say that there's a, an uptick at all. Okay. And you just get the... 
Well, the well so I think for then... for the high school, it's a little bit different this year because yeah. we're switching to computer-based testing. So I think that experience is new for everyone. Uh, and so I think there was more, um, you know, we ran infrastructure trials. Mm -hmm. We've never done that before. Right. So the computer, you know, there were some kids whose computers we were working through in the day of. So I, I think that was really the, the only kind of disruption. Um, in yeah. general, it's just... I mean, my perception was yeah. it was pretty smooth, but I didn't know. Yeah, yeah we're running right now, we, we finished MCAS today, yeah. on top of senior exams. Yeah. So we're running those concurrently. Yeah, it was late. I feel like it was late this year. And MCAS. it's always this but same guess, week, yeah. Is it the same yeah. week? Okay. So. So lots, lots going on. There's a lot going on. Great. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you. Well, the next item is also for you guys, uh, revisions to school <laughs> handbooks. We so, <laughs> no need to move chairs. Yeah. So, um, I'll start with mine. Um, so, you have my proposed handbook changes. Yeah. And really, um, there there seems to be a lot, but they are all um, really just cleaning up the language that was outdated or needed to be changed. I know. It looked like um, housekeeping to me. They're housekeeping. Yeah. So, yeah. any questions about any of them? No, not okay. at all. Thank you. Not at all. No food or drink on the bus? <laughs> no, because of um, allergies. Oh. Yeah, so. But that's always been the way. It's it's a, it has been, yeah, but it hasn't yeah. been in oh, the okay. handbook. Oh, all right. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yes. Not a new rule. Yes. Not a new rule, just, just documenting it. Yes. Great. And I really don't. Um, my handbook is going to reflect the, um, the strategic plan, the mission statement, right. the objectives, so make those changes. And uh, to speak to Jim's point, the shelter-in-place lockdown, I've added the information if it becomes necessary to evacuate, staff and students will exit the building, which was right. never an option. So now they're empowered to do that, Okay. the teachers. So Great. Um, I did add that. And the adding of the placement of students is just it is in the school committee policy it's just really never been in the handbook and you know frankly i think t um, parents read the handbook before they read the school committee policy so yeah, yeah. Um, i would because yeah, it took, <laughs> took me a long time to find it um on the policy so it's easy just to put it in the handbook yeah and they're aware of it it's not new it's just sure. a different place for them to it's what to see you've been it. doing the whole time it's what we do okay great thank you very much mm -hmm. Um, at the middle school, I actually, I, I passed these around. There was one addition um, that's on the back of that page oh, okay. um, that came out of my final school council meeting right. yesterday, and I apologize for that that's lateness right. on that. But um, so we had a, a, a couple of uh, changes. Uh, the first uh, is around our uh, plagiarism and cheating policy. We tried to update some of the language to reflect some of the digital environment so that we could use it as a, a teaching tool. Um, some of the examples were um, just not what kids are doing because mm -hmm. it's not the behaviors that they have anymore. Um, and so we wanted to, to update that format. Um, one thing our school council decided uh, that we will do next year is a review of our policy on plagiarism and cheating um, with the goal of improving the education for kids about about those behaviors. Um, and so we want to have kind of a committee meet together and take a look at that policy and um, update it more broadly um, than just these minor updates here. Yeah. Um, and then the, the addition on the back, I, I can go through all of it, but uh, the addition on the back was an update to the guidance language okay. um, to include the social emotional learning <coughs> skills that they focus on. So there's kind of minor um, language updates in the um, body of that paragraph to include the SEL language and also the fact that the counselors have resources they can provide families such as um, interface and uh, other other options if families are sure. in need of resources in the community. And so we okay. wanted to highlight that. We thought that was Great. important. Okay. Um, and I can answer any other questions about that. Okay. Um, well, for, for, for you and Mr. Donovan, the, um, your new plagiarism description, does that align with what is at the high school? Uh, what do you mean align? Didn't, didn't the high school did, yeah. revise or review and update their plagiarism handbook content? Yeah, Ms. McGuire and I are smiling because Mrs. McGuire, when me. she was assistant principal, led oh, of that, course that was. Yeah. She yeah. led that revision. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the high school Sorry, last year. may have led 
to the exactly. decision that we <laughs> okay. might want to do that. Okay, yeah. good, <laughs> good, mm-hmm. okay. So that is one of the goals. I would like it to be more of a uh, in line and progressive exactly. for the kids' yeah. experience. Exactly. Um, and also really highlight the the education part of it, not right. the punitive part, but what is right. the difference between collaborating and yeah. Yeah. sharing answers. Yeah, okay, great. That's super, thank you very much. Okay. Right, um, and at the high school, we have uh, probably the, the sh- fewest possible revisions we've submitted in quite some time. So uh, the first one is a, a, is a change to, re- to reflect um, uh, a, a change in policy, which I, is on the agenda for later this evening around PE. Yes, we haven't um, voted on it yet. So. Correct, yes. The, the uh, second is a, is a change that should have been made last year. In the yearbook, it was approved to be made, but actually didn't make it in the handbook. Excuse me. The uh, NHS requires 20 hours as right. part of the application process. This year, students who applied and will be inducted next week already have done the 20 hours. Okay. Um, the uh, item three um, is a uh, revision to the end of the uh, excuse absences section of the handbook, which deals with college absences. Any right. college visit is excused up to. Uh, two in their junior year and four in their senior year. Um, this sentence is to ad- is to address travel days, which are really kind of travel that families go on to get to the visits during the week. Um, there is a section later in the handbook where a principal, the assistant principal could uh, excuse the day depending upon, upon certain circumstances um, if, uh, if they see fit. But sure. this is just really to outline that travel days are not, families should not count on those travel days as being excused. Okay. Uh, and then the final uh, one is about uh, parking on campus. So it does not happen often, but in, over the next couple of years, we're projecting more and more juniors to be able to have parking uh, sure. access as our enrollment decreases slightly. Um, and so it is the case that sometimes students' behavior over there and, and safety in the parking lot, constantly moving from the back of the lot to the front of the lot and taking other people's spaces, uh, is just a frustrating experience. And so were there to be some sort of uh, repeated behavior over and over again, a junior would risk having parking privileges in their senior year. Fair and enough. that doesn't exist anywhere. Um, oh, right, okay. Uh, and so we thought we'd place it here. Great, okay. And the only change to, uh, Mr. Hogate's running his awards night in yeah. the pack uh, right now, but the only change that he has proposed there is to uh, require any uh, booster organization who runs a either a bazaar or a raffle or a Texas Hold'em tournament, which is also included, has to pull a permit with the town hall. And before oh. the um, uh, event takes place, we have to have that as part of the okay. fundraising request, that they've pulled the permit. Okay, great, great. Okay, thank you. Thank Do you, you guys have any questions? Mm-hmm. No, Good. great, thank you very much. Okay, mm-hmm. any I think, no, we I think can. we should maybe flip those. You want to talk about the policy? For, does it matter? Or? Um, well, uh, the, we have kind of a problem, um, which is perhaps my fault um, as chairman, in that we didn't post that we were going to be revising this policy, the um, graduation requirements policy. We didn't post it in time. Um, so, um, it needed to be posted on Monday evening. And when I talked to you yesterday, um, it was kind of too late. Um, or when I, you and I emailed about it yesterday. So I think, um, and what we've done in the past with policy revisions is we have a first reading where the new wording is presented and school committee discusses it. And then, then we actually vote on the change at a second reading. So I'm gonna propose that we um, have our first reading of the change to policy to the um, policy I, IKF or um, <coughs> the graduation requirements mm-hmm. tonight and then um, vote on it on June 13th. That'd be fine. Yeah. I, yeah. That's yeah? yep, up to you. Yeah. Um, I read through the curriculum um, uh, revised. the revised curriculum map. Uh, is that what you would call it? This. Um, template and alignment. Yes, that's how the, that's how the yeah. department has organized um, it. So uh, it seems to me as if everything, pretty much everything has been migrated from 
grade 11, 12, that course which you're proposing to um, no uh, no, not have to grades 9 and 10 curriculum. Um, so I didn't have many questions about that. It all seemed to... Just, is that, just, in, just in case people are watching, this, this topic that the chair is talking about was something that was presented on that's right. um, two meetings ago, I think, extensively by Mr. Donovan and Mr. Holder. I just don't, mm -hmm. it's the same, it's the same yeah. issue. Yeah. We didn't have this curriculum template, so it was hard to visualize. Yeah. Being yes. a visual learner, I have to see things in Absolutely. pictures. <laughs> so this is very helpful. Um, the PE department worked last Thursday on these re on these revisions as a department. Great. So that was the last. That was the the next opportunity they had from what we last. Met. Okay. Okay. And and by shifting um, some of these curriculum units to grades nine and ten, is that going to shift the time commitment or the way the courses are? Taught is yeah, and it's going it's to alter the sequence of the courses and and where, uh, how much classroom time they spend. Yeah, it will change uh, the locations. For example, there's a there was a unit I think in ninth grade about weightlifting, right, which has been kind of struck, and they're going to use the um, the cardio room instead and do that work there. And then okay. you know, so they they are making some adjustments um, based on what they think they're where they'll be able to have access to. Okay, because um, that was my concern. If you have more classroom time, have you actually got the classroom space? Because wasn't that was one of the motivations yeah. for not holding the classes. So the biggest, yes, 11. so you, you're dropped. absolutely right. So the, I'm sorry? This says it drops the weight training. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 That's right. um, so the, the real obstacle with classroom space is when you add a, th although I will, uh, I should restate this. So we do have a classroom space issue as it relates to phys ed. Uh, in these health and wellness courses. Right. One of the big uh, factors in, in proposing that we eliminate the 11th and 12th grade courses is that we can't really still handle the 9th and 10th grade one, um, let alone adding an 11th, uh, right. a third course there. So the teachers believe um, we are benefiting a little bit from, from our enrollment dip, right? We're starting to yeah. feel as the high school. Uh, we're, we're just under 1,000 students, yeah. and next year we'll be a little bit more. So we do feel like our, our class sizes are getting smaller, and so those are more manageable. So we okay. can s kind of squirrel our way into classrooms sure. at 25 and in some sections, 24 and, uh, excuse me, and 20, and, and there's a couple yeah. of ninth grade sections that are even less than 20, into, a, an, into an available classroom. Sure. Well, two years ago when we were 20, 30, or plus, we right. couldn't even get into the classrooms that were available. So uh, they do feel that they can manage this and that we can manage, and I feel like we can manage it as a school. Okay. Um, did I answer did, your question? Correctly? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Uh, and then the follow-up question to that is, um, when you were here in March, you talked about um, a health and wellness fair, and I wondered if plans had progressed with that and whether we could look forward to more information about what what topics when it's going to be held and you know what topics are yeah. going to be covered and that type of thing yeah so um, that was a part of the discussion that the PE department had last right. Thursday in the PD day so okay. I'm not sure the specifics about uh, that okay. um, I do know that we were shooting for the spring because we have credit for life in the fall semester right. okay. and so we're looking to balance that and have it be early enough that we um, I think we were talking about March-ish because we want to avoid the April break, yeah. um, AP end of the year kind of sure. onslaught that we're in right now. Right. Um, were you thinking of doing it during Breathe Out Week? Uh, we we were. Breathe, we moved the Breathe Out Week into early March this year, away from mid-year exams. Yeah. Um, but and they may have talked about that last week. I'm not aware of that conversation. Okay, great. But we did move that to to the first. I think it was the first week in March where everyone needs to okay. take that break. Mm -hmm. and, and has there um, been any feedback from students about what they might like to see at, uh, in this health curriculum? I, know, I mean, I know when the committee was meeting, we had students on the committee, but I wondered whether there had been feedback from students experiencing the curriculum as to whether certain topics were needed expanding or retracting or... Uh, that's a wonderful question. I, I'll have to get you an answer for that. Okay. I'm not sure 
uh, what a conversations the PE teachers have had with their students okay. at this point. Yeah. But I, I will ask Tom to get that Okay, because that might inform w the plans for health, the health and wellness fair as to what's missing oh, from the classroom sessions. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. So, um, so the, um, Dr. Antonucci's provided us with some um, wording, a uh, rewording of the um, policy IKF, which is academic and graduation requirements. And so he's um, proposing that the uh, the PE requirement is now going to read four semesters of physical education and health, inclusive of intro to PE health nine, which is for ninth grade, and health and wellness 10 for 10th grade, um, and striking out the health and wellness 11 slash 12. The only change is the strikeout. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so I think we'll um, have any feedback on that tonight. Um, let's have that and then we can vote on it Thanks in June. Yeah. And I think we'll vote, because we can't really vote the DHS handbook that proposes changing the PE requirement in, until we change that. Yeah, that's, that's right? fine. So, yeah, that's fine. so we'll, in June we'll vote the DHS handbook and this um, change to policy IKF. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the student handbooks we can vote on tonight. So Chandler Alden Middle School? Exactly, okay. because those don't have any policy, aren't linked to any policy changes. Okay. Is that all right? So any feedback around policy IKF? No. Okay. No. Great. Good. So shall we have a vote for the, um, to accept the Handbooks, student handbooks for Chandler, Alden, and Duxbury Middle School. I motion that we um, accept all revisions to student handbooks at Chandler, Alden, and the Middle School. Great. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have any other correspondence or any other issues we're going to talk about? Mm -hmm. I have a couple of things, Julia. Okay, great. Um, I just wanted to mention that there was an article in the paper, I think it was Cambridge Ringe in Latin. I thought it was really interesting at the high school level. They have decided to um, no longer have college prep level English and history classes because those courses are just so important for dialogue and learning and they felt, um, obviously it's a different demographic, but they felt there was sort of um, more minority students of color were being in the college prep levels, whereas the white students were populating the honors, and they have moved to just having honors level, and it's working well for students, even students who are on IEPs and 504s, and so I thought that was an interesting um, approach at a high school. Um, and the other thing I wanted to give a shout out was um, at the high school, and Jess, I was waiting to see if she'd mentioned, there were two students who were foster in foster care. Mm -hmm. They grew up in foster care, and they just did a bag collection, yes. which I thought was really awesome and amazing. Um, and there were a bunch of kids at the table when you went in to drop, and I thought, what a great way to rally the troops. And it was just a nice um, and a good awareness for our Duxbury community because we don't really, ha you know, have, we don't, see that a lot or it's not talked about a lot mm -hmm. um, so I just I thought that was really terrific for those girls to be if you didn't see the letter, letter was unbelievable it was yeah terrific. it was so well written it was unbelievable. Yeah. and it was fantastic yeah so it looks like the mm -hmm. high school community really embraced that yeah. great um, and then my one other thing that I wish we could talk about at some point or I don't even know if there's a solution is the traffic flow <laughs> the drop-off seriously like you can be in that line at 8 o'clock and your child is still mm -hmm. tardy because you can't get through the line. And it's, I don't know what the answer, well, I, I have a solution. I think the buses should go around yeah. back and the parents should be able to come around the front because then you would just get them through. Yeah, that, that's, beyond, that's beyond me. But right, the, um, I mean, well, it's just, the buses too. it's so frustrating <laughs> <laughs> to be on campus and your kid, you know, know. It, it, in your, 
the, in the line and they have MCAS or they have whatever and the, they're yeah. going to be tardy. I'll certainly pass it on to yeah. uh, the SRO, but um, yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, I know. Mm -hmm. if more people didn't, I mean, it, I know it's. I wonder how many of those cars yeah. are because their kids are under two miles, and how many kids would be bus eligible that we could. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to see, so. for is it for oh, Alden traffic as well as the middle school traffic that you're talking about. Um, I've so never done an Alden drop off because yeah. my so Alden kids later. have all taken yeah. the bus, yeah. Yeah. but mm -hmm. it's middle school, high school. And yeah, it's a line. It's, yeah. all, it's all fee based. All fee based at that mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. And it's morning is worse. Afternoon's not as bad. I mean, you get stuck behind the buses, so you mm -hmm. kind of know that. But I feel mm -hmm. like there are more parents dropping off than picking up. Yeah. You can come through at 2.55 and psh, get right in to get your child at the end of the day. But the drop off in the morning. I'd be curious. We could think about surveying. I don't know if, oh. what kind of return we get, but surveying what, why, they're, why they're choosing to drive. I mean, I think a lot of it's just personal. Like, mm -hmm. But I wonder if it's. I wonder if it's related to the fact that there's a, a charge. Um, that wouldn't surprise me. I think me. with a lot of parents that is, and yeah. they have multiple children, so mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. they're bringing all their kids to middle school, high school once they're all at that right. level, yeah. right. until the you know kids can drive themselves. But yeah, yeah it's just it, this year especially, I feel like it's just gotten much worse than Maybe last year. Maybe we can year. encourage more carpooling too when possible, just to have less cars if there's a number of parents right. all coming from the same neighborhood with one or two kids in the car, that would cut down. Have do a carpool, bike, carpool do, yeah. bike to school day every well, day. Well, that's I the know. thing. They're on sidewalks <laughs> and duck free. There's not. No, you know, it's tough. My it's kids really can't tough. ride their bikes to school. It's it is tough. No, I know. It, I'm joking, but the drive no, to the bike to school day was. Yeah. yeah. It takes an effort, right? It oh, takes. Right. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, and everybody yeah. knows. Everybody knows. Yeah, like everybody's on high alert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So nobody gets run over. Stop. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So that was. All right. Duly noted. Yep. Okay. Great. Good. Thank you. Anything else that we want to cover? Okay. May I have a motion public to Public comment, Julia, just Oh, pardon me. Part public comment? Matthew? It's dark. It's dark back there. Just in case. Yeah. All of that's rough. It's dark. Right. Okay. Um, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? Move to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. So. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Two things. Um,